Hello there you amazing viewers and subscribers and welcome to a brand new My Favourite 5 Stories of my 4th Favourite Doctor played by John Pertwee. Now when I said when I last said me update and I said the fourth my 4th fourth Favourite Doctor was Troughton, he's moved up to 3rd and Peter Capaldi has moved down to 6th. So these are my 5 favourite stories from the John Pertwee era plus... The epic five honourable mentions that I just think they deserve to be in this. If this was a top ten list, it would be these stories would be definitely in the top ten. So if I do this like I normally do, if I go up to five to three and then go straight to the honourable mentions and talk about my two favourite John Pertwee stories of all time. Like, let's get into this. So in fifth place, I have put the Curse of Paladin. I love the Curse of Paladin. One, it's the return of the Ice Warriors, and they're not really the villainous, they are more friendly. We meet Alpha Satori for the very first time, who did return in the Capita Capaldi episode in Empress of Mars, where they open the communication, she goes, Hello, Mars! This is Alpha Centauri! I really enjoy uh, the Paladon trilogy, the little two stories we have with Paladon. I like the fact that they're, they're called, trying to kill the Doctor off, and the Doctor's there fighting in the pit because I think they he killed one of the ambassadors well tried to kill one of the ambassadors which he didn't and then of course it all gets found out because the main person that is King Paladon's number one ends up getting found out he's the one that's causing all the trouble all the people that are dying and he gets killed himself and everything goes back to normal and then of course you have the doctor and Joe talking about joining the carnation on Paladon and then they get bumped into the ice warriors talking to the Earth ambassador. And the ice warriors are going, but the doctor is the ambassador. Doctor? Who is the doctor? I am the president. I am the ambassador from Earth. And then the doctor and Jay run into the TARDIS. And the TARDIS vanishes when they literally just walk into the room. I do enjoy that story. My fourth favourite story, I have to say, it is the Sea Devils. Now, good thing about the third doctor, he has you and the feet. Fiki, I can't say the actual word. The Fikido, you know, where it just goes hi like that, and it's no good trying to do martial arts against a sea devil because the sea devils know what they're doing and they literally put the doctor on their ass. And it is great the way they've done that. The master is in this story because this story continues on from the eighth final story, which is the Daemons, where the master is there invested and he's been for his crimes, what he did, and he. He's the master, you know, he manipulates people, he hypnotises them to do what he wants. So when they think he's safe in the prison, he's actually causing hay hayock. And sinking the R the um the Royal Navy boats because of the sea devils having a secret base in the middle of the sea where the sea devils are. And then when you have that epic scene with John Pert with the sonic screwdriver, like pulling it, setting off the mines, and you just see the uh, sea devils running away across the beach. That is another great story. Now, my third favourite story is from season seven, and it is called Inferno. This is where the very first time in Doctor Who we go to a parallel universe. With the Doctor trying to repair the TARDIS console unit so he can try and leave Earth and go on to travels in the universe, it goes terribly, terribly wrong because the TARDIS ends up taking him not into space, it takes him into a parallel universe where the offence that is going on in the parallel universe is slowly starting to happen in our universe. So he travels from that universe back into our universe and stops it all from happening, which is a great John Perky story. Really enjoy that. So coming into the honourable mentions now. So my fifth favourite honourable mention, I have to say, is Planet of the Spiders. I enjoy the story. I think it's absolutely great. Again, we are we are on two different planets. We've got Earth and we've got Metabolus 3. The Doctor's got the Metabolus Christ Crystal because he went to Metabolus 3 in the season before in the Green Death for like a few scenes where he ends up getting attacked. And then these giant spiders want the crystal back. So they go to Earth by using a portal that they created to try and get into Earth and they jump on Lotten's back and they use Lotten to try and get hold of the blue crystal which basically we get quite a lot of good stuff on it and then Sarah Jane ends up standing on the mat and she gets teleported to Metabolus 3 where the Doctor tells um, Captain Yates, well Mike Yates who is not a captain in the story, he goes to him, well the Tides, but Doctor you thought the Tides is life, 
Yes, I do, don't I? And the smile. And he goes to the TARDIS, it takes off, and he lands on Metal Earth Ray just when Sarah is about to be captured by a big, giant, little spider. So, anyway, after the Doctor does his, you know, the martial arts thing, the use of Kikado, and he literally puts people on his asses, and then they use their, like, spider-like powers and electrocutes him at the back, and he tries to make it back to his TARDIS. And then, of course, the events go on. I don't want to give too much away about the story, because this is a great story, and I want you all to have your own opinion about it, and I want you to sit down and watch it, because I actually got this story on Target Novel Book, VHS and DVD because I just love this story completely. I love the fact the Doctor goes back to Earth to try and get hold of the blue crystal and he ends up taking it straight into the big, massive, giant spider known as the All Hail the Great One with the big, giant spider and that he gives back the crystal and he gets radiation poisoning from the metabolic crystals and it triggers his regeneration. He gets lost in the time vortex. He comes out and he goes to Sarah I got lost in the tiny vortex. The TARDIS, she brought me home and he just collapses and then goes, Doctor, please don't die. A tear, Sarah Jane. Now don't cry, don't cry. Why does life this? <clears throat> and then you have the little chanvo tutley of a Time Lord and he goes, The Doctor is alive. No, you're wrong, he's dead. But you forget, he is a Time Lord. And then he literally puts his hands out, like giving the healing power. Which sets off the regeneration process and he regenerates into the fourth Doctor. I really love Planet of the Spiders. I can do a whole video about Planet of the Spiders because it's just an absolutely great story. My fourth favourite honourable mention is the Time Warrior. Now this one is also from season 11. It is the introduction story to Sarah Jane Smith. It is an introduction story to the Santarans. And it's a prehistoric story set in Middle, um, Middle Earth. Whatever it's called, Middle Ages, something like that. With um, the Santarin landing on Iron Fox's ground. Once Iron, Iron Vaughn, whatever his name is, wants to take over the cast, uh, castle. Which the Doctor and Sarah Jane prevent. And the Santarin ends up dying because of one of the people flying like a bow and arrow straight into the back of the neck. Which is where the weak point for Santarin. And it's a great story as well. Third honourable mention, I have to say, it is The Mind of Evil. I love the story from season 8. I love the fact we have... Some sort of like peace talk going on with Uni and the Masters there trying to manipulate the events. Trying to get hold of a weapon that Captain Yates is moving. But you have the kind of mind evil where it affects people's minds. It moves the evil and sometimes it kills them, sometimes it doesn't. With the Doctor, he just sees Daleks. With the Master, he just saw the Doctor. So they had to create like this... um round thing to try and stop the evil the the mind of evil from moving around and stuff but it's actually a great iconic story my second honorable mention it is the claws of axos now this was my first ever john pertwee story and i absolutely loved it i think it's great i love the fact we have an american spy in this trying to work out trying to help you know to capture the master we have axons which i've or axos which is a great Source. It's a great villain because Axos is a whole entity instead of being like an alien species and it wants to drain our planet's Earth core which the Doctor does stop by giving them to the TARDIS and having the secrets of time travel. But he does trap trap the whole lot of Axos inside a Croton time loop so it can live out its life in a time loop until it dies which I really think I need to go back and revisit that. I really would like to see Axos break out of that time loop and... A doc, one of the future doctors have to go and defeat the Axons again. Now, for honorable mention, my all time favorite honorable mention, I wanted to say I would do want to put this in top five. It is the Green Death because one, we have giant maggots, we have giant flies. This is a kind of story that represents something that was going on on Earth in the time with the mines closing down and. Global chemicals dropping their chemical waste down into the mine pits, which had um, flies in it and actually made them large with big giant fly eggs. I do enjoy the story because one, it is Joe Grant's last story and it gives her a good ascending off because she goes and gets married to Cliff Cliff Jones, which is mentioned in the Sojourn Adventures um, season four, Death of the Doctor. 
I just absolutely love the Green Death. I think it's a great story. So coming back into my top two all-time favourite John Pertwee stories. So my second favourite John Pertwee story is The Three Doctors. Now this one was the first time I actually ever got to see Patrick Troughton and William Hartnell because I never really watched them growing up because their stories were missing and unfortunately not a lot of their stories were being released on VHS or DVD. So this was the first, first one I actually ever watched with Troughton and John Per with Troughton and William Hartnell, John Pertwee. And I love it. Omega is a great villain. I like the little blubby creatures, the jail guards, that's it. I like the fact with the Brigadier's reaction to the TARDIS and Sergeant Benton's. And I love the fact when the Doctor just goes talking to Joe and he goes, You see, Joe, he is one of me. Well, I see your time was no. Not quite. We're not we're not just time lords. We're the same. Oh, please, you're just confusing my assistant. I and he and he is me. <laughs> I love the way John Perry just that. I goes, I and he and he is me. <laughs> and then when the first doctor comes on the, like the screen and he's talking, and then they ask it, Joe asks him, who is that? And they both go, me, me. <laughs> I just love the way they both argue. And I love the fact, the chemistry with, with um, Troughton with the Brickadier, where he's there talking, he goes, no, 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 Brickadier, leave it alone. My God, it's not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the first one. Look, are you are you not the doctor that I encountered in that business with the Yeti? And then later, with the seven. Of course I am. You can see that. Right. But then I next saw you, you turned into some tall, white hair person. Did I really, oh, doctor? Look, there's no point telling me this, Brickadier, because as far as I'm concerned, it hasn't happened yet. I love the way the Patrick Stratton just does that with his doctor. He literally is the doctor still. I love the fact, John, how... John Pertwee and Patrick Troughton just bounce off each other with their doctors. And I love it in the in the three doctors, no, in the five doctors, sorry, when he's there talking and he goes, goodbye, S Scarecrow, where he goes, fancy pants, Scarecrow. I love the way they just have that little banter. And the fact in life, John Pertwee and Patrick Troughton still had that kind of banter in one of the um, conventions in there. Uh, I can't remember what it was. It was, it, it's in there. It's in the Blu-ray documentary and in season 10 and on one of the DVDs where Patrick Triton and John Pertwee just had a water fight in their Doctor Who convention, which is <laughs> great because you just see Patrick Triton just running away from John Pertwee while John Pertwee's there with, with like a bowl of water chasing after John Patrick Triton. I really enjoyed it. That's quite good. So, number one, my all-time favourite John Pertwee story. My all-time favourite John Pertwee story. Have you guessed what it is? If not, then... You might need to go and watch this story because it is called Spare Head from Space. It is John Pertwee's very first story and it is out on DVD, Blu-ray. As you can tell, I own this on the Target Novel Bog. I own it on VHS. I own this on the DVD. I own two DVDs copies of it. And I own it on the Blu-ray in Blu-ray Steelbook. I absolutely love Spare Head from Space. I like the fact that it's with the first appearance of the Autons. John Pertwee is spot on in this. I mean, he does get kidnapped and he's there. In the wheelchair trying to escape and he ends up getting shot going, Who told you to fight you stupid? And then just like that and he goes, Yeah. I really do like Spare Head from Space. I like the fact we have John Pert, we just pretending to be asleep and then he wakes up and goes in the wheelchair trying to escape from the people that are trying to kidnap him. I really enjoy this story, it's great. And then he literally works out the plot how to destroy the nest nesting consciousness. And he literally's there with being strangled by the octopus version of it. And it's just a great story. So this is my five favourite plus honourable mentions of John Pertwee's Doctor. Let me know in the comments what are your five favourite John Pertwee stories. Is John Pertwee one of your favourite Doctors? Let me know. And please do like, subscribe and share to my channel. Have a great day and join me tomorrow for more Doctor Who content.